We have been, we are and we will be the backbone of the German uh, industry as a whole. Yeah. We make sure that goods get here on time, on quality, with high reliability. We at Lufthansa Cargo definitely have a purpose and IT at Lufthansa Cargo has a purpose on its own, really bringing technology into our business to make better business. Don't just look for a battle to fight for, but really look where is it really promising to spend your energy, but also have your conviction and go for it, fight for it. But if you also see that something you can't change, I think it's maybe due to my age or due to my experience here, yeah, take it, accept it or leave it. This is Siana TV. My name is Hendrik Deckers. I'm here today with Dr. Jochen Goetelman who is the VP Information Management at the Lufthansa Cargo. A very warm welcome, Jochen. Very warm welcome to you, Henrik, to our office building here at Frankfurt Airport. Jochen, you studied at the uh, University of Valencia in Spain, and you have a master's degree in mathematics from the uh, Gutenberg Universität in Mainz, uh, where you also started your career as a researcher. Uh, you took then a job as a, 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 in IT as a project manager in the investment bank and you moved on in the finance uh, industry, uh, several senior IT role at Credit Suisse and at Allianz. And then in 2015, you switched industry and became CIO of uh, Lufthansa Cargo. So Jochen, tell us a little bit more about yourself. How do you go from studying mathematics into uh, into research, into yeah. finance, and then into uh, uh, into cargo. Yeah, sure. No, thanks for summarizing my CV <laughs> uh, uh, shortly. So um, actually, my background is science, natural science. So uh -huh. uh, with a strong focus on on applied uh, uh, mathematics and so. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, when I decided, uh, or when I had to decide, yeah, what to do after the studies. First time I spent actually some years in research mm -hmm. in a domain somewhere between mathematics, physics, meteorology, and and actually uh, computer science. So it was really uh, interdisciplinary task uh, to do for a uh, yeah, simulation of global uh, um, atmospheric okay. uh, dynamics. Um, Very important studies nowadays. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But after four years, I said no. The, uh, University is is a great time. It was mm -hmm. a great time, but now it's really time to move on to something different and mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more practical in industry. And uh, uh, indeed, my first 17 years after university, I spent most time in the financial industry at uh -huh. different companies. Yeah, some of them already gone. Uh, <laughs> others uh, are still very strong in the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah, after 17 years, I felt it's yeah, now time to do something again, different in a different industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I had the chance actually to join Lufthansa Cargo, which is basically two industries. We are mm -hmm. both an airline, yep. but also a logistic company. So mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a pretty uh, broad uh, spectrum uh, on, on our business uh, yep. processes. Actually, so my background is strong in technology mm -hmm. with a high business focus. Yep. Yeah, this was already uh, uh, in my first um, research activities at university where I yeah, really developed software okay. for numerical solutions of global atmospheric dynamics, then more practical in the financial industry mm -hmm. where we tried to use technology, both IT infrastructure but also applications to uh, um, yeah, serve the business in a high, highly reliable but also highly compliant uh, environment. Yep. And now, uh, as you can imagine, Lufthansa Cargo is actually moving things from A to B. It's a <laughs> physical business. Yeah? Yep. We are flying, we are shifting goods from A to B, we are packing, unpacking, we are uh, building pallets, we are breaking down pallets, we have to move it. Yep. And so it's a lot of physics, mm -hmm. which needs to support it also by the information flow. And again, an extremely fascinating environment for yep. IT, for the business. Yeah, and so tell us a little bit more about Lufthansa Cargo. How, how big is it? The, the headquarters are here in Frankfurt, right? Correct, yeah. We are uh, basically centered and headquartered here at the Rhein-Main Airport mm -hmm. um, with a yeah, Lufthansa Cargo Center, our hub environment here, some three kilometers down the uh, airport, mm -hmm. where we basically uh, um, yeah, have 80% of our freights uh, in the um, transit. Mm -hmm. Lufthansa Cargo has about 4,000 people. Okay. We are serving about 300 stations worldwide. 
on all continents except for Australia, mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> um, with a fleet of something like 16, 17 freighters, dedicated okay. planes like that, huh? yep. with a main deck and belly capacity. But also we fill the bellies of um, something like 300, 400 uh, planes of the whole Lufthansa group, including uh, our brands like Lufthansa, like Eurowings, like Austrian and so on. Okay. And so, I mean, the logistics world, but also the airline world has undergone major changes. I mean, the last couple of years were uh, quite fascinating, I would say. So, uh, so you have the inside <laughs> look. How, how, how would you describe what are the challenges that Lufthansa Cargo and, and the industry is facing today? What are the main things that the business is busy with nowadays? Yeah, I think on an uh, abstract level, you can really say uh, this is absolutely VUCA, <laughs> what we have experienced <laughs> the last two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I remember, uh, um, probably we at Lufthansa Cargo were the first business unit in Lufthansa Group, yeah, somehow feeling that uh, the small virus will impact us. Mm -hmm. yeah? Why that? In January 2020, where we still had no idea about home office and lockdowns and so here yeah. in Europe, yeah, we already felt that the um, logistic chains yeah, out of China are getting broken. And we felt already a load, load factor in our planes and so. And then at a sudden it came to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you probably know, yeah, Lufthansa was pretty close to insolvency in 2020, June 2020, simply due to the huge loss of money. Yeah. And uh, we are really grateful to the uh, governments in Berlin, uh, Bern, uh, Vienna and also Brussels you know, for the bailout packages to yeah. really help the whole group to survive as all of the other airlines worldwide yeah. in all continents. But Lufthansa Cargo had a very, very different role. Yeah? Okay. We felt that at a sudden, yeah, even the demand for air freight increased extremely. Yeah? Maybe you remember the pictures where we had the first planes uh, coming to Munich uh, full of masks, full of uh, yeah. oxygen concentrators. And so we really yeah, helped the whole society, the whole uh, continent to uh, uh, get the medical stuff here right on time. And uh, air freight takes about a week from uh, origin to destination, while sea freight takes something like eight, ten weeks uh, only, and uh, in these times, of course, air freight has an even more important role than ever before. Yeah, then yeah. it became very, very clear the crucial role that, that uh, air freight plays in society. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And of course, these uh, um, uh, medical supply transport were pretty prominent, but also mm -hmm. the whole yeah, a, a whole uh, change in the supply chains. Yeah. yeah, you hear every day in the news about the yeah blocked channels or uh, locked ports somewhere in the world, or all the trouble we had in the crisis also to yeah get shipping crews mm -hmm. exchanged worldwide. Yeah, we are, we have been, we are, and we will be the backbone also uh, the German uh, industry mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, as a whole. Yeah, we, we make sure that. Uh, Goods get here on time, on yeah. quality, with high reliability. And uh, um, yeah, to just give you the idea of the role of air freight, yeah, uh, average price of a ton of goods transported by sea freight is about 2,000 euro. Uh -huh. uh, average value of air freight is 80,000 80, euro oh per yeah. ton, so 40 okay. times higher, 40 which times really more shows yeah, whether it's notebooks, whether it's iPhones, whether it's vulnerables, whether it's uh, perishables, whether it's medicine, whether it's vaccination, yeah, everything is transported by air freight. And we yeah. play the crucial role. We are the market leader in Europe, yeah. amongst the top 10 airlines in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's really uh, extremely fascinating, but also complex uh, yeah. business, not only from the business perspective, but also. Yeah. Yeah. So that means IT we need. It's, it's a crucial industry and, 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 and cargo has, plays a crucial role in, in, in supply chain in general. So I can imagine also that then IT is, is, plays a crucial role in, in the efficient and, and optimized way of running the, running the company. So let's talk a little bit about a couple of the programs that you have, uh, you and your teams have implemented yeah. over the last couple of years to make sure that IT functions well and, and, and can yeah. support the business processes. Yeah. So I understand that um, one of the programs that you're quite proud of and that made a big impact also here in the organization is the, the new booking engine that has, been, uh, yeah. that has been built. So tell me a little bit the history of that program, of that project, 
what was the problem, yeah, how was yeah. it uh, approached, and, yeah. uh, and so on. Yeah, the booking engine is basically the core of all our commercial uh, mm -hmm. processes for booking, pricing, revenue management, and so on. Yeah? Um, the current engine relied on a more than 20 years old code. Yep. At this time, from the late 1990s, it was state of the art with a lot of uh, 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 really uh, sophisticated programming techniques like CORBA. Maybe some of you remind, remember that technology to, yeah, to, to, to uh, um, merge uh, C++ high-performance backends with Java-based surfaces and so. Mm -hmm. But this is now completely outdated technology. Yep. Yeah. We already had some strategic plans in 2012, so on 10 years back. Yep. Yeah to migrate the old legacy booking engine to a state-of-the-art industry approach, a standard software. Yeah. So that was, that was tried in 2012, right? It was decided in 2012. Okay. In these times, we had a strong focus rather on modernization of our backend uh, system in mm -hmm. the fulfillment and operations processes. So in 2016, finally, we started that approach to mm -hmm. migrate to a standard engine. Yeah. After two years, we learned it doesn't work out. Wow. Yeah, our business is too complex, mm -hmm. especially at Lufthansa Cargo with all the uh, business specifics we have here, yeah, to be implemented by any I standard application in the world. And um, so after one year of uh, rethinking, yeah, we uh, completely reviewed the approach and decided to, um, and this was a complete uh, uh, change also in our IT strategy, mm -hmm. to completely shift to bespoke development back. Wow. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We uh, decided to, um, uh, develop a cloud native approach, the first cloud project at scale at Lufthansa Group at mm -hmm. all, based yeah. on the Microsoft Azure environment, yeah, in an agile way with a, a true Scrum like a, a development approach, also pretty new for us at yeah. that scale, mm -hmm. not only just for a smaller project, but for 60, 80 developers in parallel. And we started that implementation approach in 2019. Okay. Yeah, we expected the project to take something like three years mm -hmm. with that size. And then again, yeah, at a sudden just started the development after half a year, we were in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah? And you can imagine a project which costs maybe half of a price of an airplane, mm -hmm. of course is getting reviewed and uh, uh, challenged again by the, uh, 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 by the controllers. Of course, but in yeah. the end, we decided to continue the project. We, sli mm -hmm. we slowed it a little bit down to mm -hmm. reduce the cash out during the pandemic. But and this is something Lufthansa Cargo is really, really proud on. Yeah? In the middle of the crisis, in October, November 2020, we launched a completely new yeah, booking front for our clients. Yeah. Yeah, and we are now close to the completion of the project also for our internal users by the end of the year. Okay, so if I summarize it, in 2012, there was a decision to replace the old legacy system with uh, the first decision was let's implement the package. And then after some a year or so decide, well, it's not going to work. It doesn't. And then you, you took the decision, let's throw that away. Let's start from scratch and let's do it ourselves. Absolutely. Complete and, and different approach. Yeah. Wow. And, and then you decided uh, to do that completely cloud. So the m first major cloud program and the first major Scrum uh, uh, agile DevOps uh, way of way of working. So it was a new platform, a new way of working, and that in the middle of the crisis. So absolutely, um, <laughs> <laughs> must have been fun. So tell us a little bit about the approach. How do you how do you do that? How do you uh, how do you build? How do you change a company and and a software yeah. factory in, inside the company? Yeah. How do you change that into a, in an, into an agile software factory? In, in effect. Yeah, actually, that change was uh, um, not really easy for everybody. Yeah, when imagine, we yeah. said cloud in the beginning, and Lufthansa Group has a, a overall cloud strategy to get rid of our on-prem data centers. Mm -hmm. We still have. Yeah, cloud is. Yeah, what actually means cloud? Some people understand just rebuilding a data center, which is infrastructure as a service. Mm -hmm. Other think cloud is just a SaaS service. Yeah. yeah. And we understood no for Peacebook DLL, we really need that platform as a service layer, which is probably the most complex and tricky one. Mm -hmm. yeah? You can uh, rely on the um, standard cloud uh, um, platform services, mm -hmm. but you need to do a lot on engineering, security hardening, also all the uh, approval processes to get that done. Also the uh, um, uh, deployment and upgrade processes is very, very different to the established world of releases and deployments and mm -hmm. patches and upgrades and yeah. so 
And this uh, required also new skills. Mm -hmm. We engage also new people, cloud architects, yeah. and uh, um, we also focus a lot of that on that uh, people change management. So, so the Scrum Master itself is a crucial role. It's not just an admin overhead like a PMO. Yeah. It's really a crucial role to support the methodology, also to yeah, keep the discipline up from day one mm -hmm. yeah, across every each and every sprint. After each, each sprint, after three weeks, we have a sprint review with all involved stakeholders mm -hmm. to understand, yeah, did we really meet the expected burn rate? If not, what were the obstacles? If so, yeah, were the goals ambitious enough? But also, and this is really great, uh, um, here at Lufthansa Group, we had a strong internal partner, mm -hmm. our sister company, Lufthansa Industry Solutions, which uh, uh, supported us basically on the development okay. resources. But uh, um, now we are also shifting part of the uh, core development competences also from our partner into our own team, mm -hmm. because we understand uh, if you invest in bespoke development, uh, you can't simply buy software. You also need to invest in the right skills, in the right people, in the right competences. Yeah, and that are close enough to the business. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, this is the next uh, change we are doing in our organization to extend our role from just say, yeah, steering the demand and managing our providers mm -hmm. into really a software driven yeah. organization which is capable and competent to develop software on our own. Yeah. That's the next real change in our corporate culture and our uh, philosophy, how we do IT. Yeah. And so you said that as before you, uh, you completely changed your sourcing strategy. Uh, you you, you uh, did a lot of outsourcing before, so you had to insource with, with the strategic partner, the Lufthansa in-house in, in partner, uh, let's say. Um, but you said you had like, uh, what was it, 70, 80 people working on this program at the same time. How do you, how do you organize that? How do you stay agile with yeah. such a big team? Yeah. No, actually, as I said, uh, we broke the whole team down into four parallel DevOps teams. Okay. Yeah? They are running more or less uh, in parallel and in sync. Uh, mm -hmm. two, were more, two are more focused on the front-end development. Okay. Two more a little bit on the back-end logics, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, hidden logics behind the um, user interfaces. And this works pretty well in the whole team. They have dedicated product owners mm -hmm. for the special topics. There's a very, very competent overall product owner who really has the vision where to go yeah. with the whole application what to rebuild, but also what to skip from the legacy. And uh, finally, as I said, we have a couple of cross-functional strong competences for cloud architecture, for yeah, um, security by design, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah, really checking secure software development at the time of implementation and yeah. not after deployment yeah. uh, by the pen tests. Um, and again, communication, people change management, and the yeah, keeping up the methodology by the Scrum Masters mm -hmm. is really crucial okay. for such a uh, scaled agile project. Okay. And so what, what was the impact on the business? Was, was, who are the users of the system? Is that internal people? Is that partners? Is that clients? Uh, what are the different use cases of, of, of this uh, new booking engine? Yes, all of them actually. We have a web-based front end for our external clients, mm -hmm. the forwarders, which are uh, uh, booking with Lufthansa Cargo. Yeah. And uh, actually, there are several entry channels. One is based on the yeah, user interface embedded in our um, LufthansaCargo.com portal. Mm -hmm. Another one is also APIs. We also empower our clients now to use APIs for bookings. Yep. We are also able to connect to distribution platforms, uh, which are somehow in between as a broker, somehow mm -hmm. between our clients and uh, us as a carrier. Um, Another strong user group is, of course, our employees. Mm -hmm. yeah, about half of our employees are using the booking engine somehow yeah, for booking, but also for backend processes like pricing, like revenue management, capacity mm -hmm. management, and so. Yeah. And uh, um, also in our fulfillment, if for whatever reason you need to do a rebooking uh, during the fulfillment process, mm -hmm. uh, long after we have already accepted the freight from the, um, yeah. uh, from the um, uh, shipper, yeah, there might be a reason to rebook for whatever reason, and yep. they also use. So basically, you can say uh, um, the majority of all people at yep. Lufthansa Cargo somehow use the booking yep. engine. So there's many entries. Yeah? So there's internal yeah. users, there's web users, there's APIs. Yeah. So and and it's in the cloud. So how do you how do you keep a system like that safe? We talked a bit about security, but yeah. can you go a bit yeah. further? Yeah. 
Um, indeed, uh, we introduced, um, which is really a good recommendation to to uh, to, to everybody. Yeah, really do security by design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really try to avoid any leaks, any vulnerabilities at the time of coding, mm -hmm. and not yeah at time deployment, of deployment or release <laughs> dates. Yeah, afterwards you will have much more to do afterwards. Yeah. But you also have very little learnings for the developer. Yeah, yeah actually, and. Uh, um, now we use a tool from Checkmarks, mm -hmm. to which you can configure quite extensively uh, on the relevant uh, security levels, which really helps to avoid many, many uh, um, uh, security flaws mm -hmm. in the coding. Of course, it doesn't help you on the configuration. Yeah? And here again, our uh, cloud experts have a high competence in securing the environment um, yeah. in uh, um, Lufthansa Group. But we also need to admit it was quite a long learning curve here yeah, that Security in a cloud environment is very different to security in an on-prem data center. Yeah. yeah, you do not have full control of the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you rely on PaaS services or the uh, Kubernetes cluster, yeah. yeah, you have to accept that your cloud provider might change the setting overnight without letting you know in advance. Yeah, and so you also need to be very aware on any change in the um, mm -hmm. parameters and uh, um, yeah, immediately. Uh, change your own configuration if required. Okay. So, so invest really, you, you really need to invest a lot in yeah. that uh, uh, additional role. It's not just the coding itself yeah. and the developers. So, so there was a lot to learn on how to work in an agile way and then there was a lot of work to do with a new security way of uh, build security in by design. And you had to learn a lot about uh, the, the past service for Microsoft, Azure, and, and so on and so many, many uh, different things. What, and that has now been running for three years or so. Tell us a little bit, where are you in, in the deployment? Are you already shutting down the old legacy system? What's the, what's the plan there? Yeah, the legacy system is still running in parallel. Uh -huh. uh, we will uh, completely uh, shift to the new application by end of the year. Mm -hmm. We already have released the freeze, which we had uh, during the major part of the uh, development time yep. uh, by um, January 2022. So we are already now yeah, still uh, re-implementing the old booking engine, mm -hmm. but also already implementing new projects uh, in the new environment. Okay. And actually also the huge demand in our commercial processes, booking, pricing, revenue management, yeah, was actually also one motivation for uh, yep. that adventure we have yep. undertaken here. Yeah, simply because uh, we see that yeah, the main lever for uh, um, better customer service, for also higher efficiency and uh, more uh, connectivity with our uh, uh, partners yep. and uh, uh, clients uh, is basically all around booking. Yep. And in the legacy system, um, we were still no longer able to really develop major yep. projects. It was old code. And so uh, we are now looking forward to maybe five years of a roadmap implementation yep. for all the uh, 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 create ideas of so our once business. you go completely live, there will still be quite a team on, on top of this that will continue to further develop. And so it's not a project anymore, it's become a product, right? It's becoming a true product with yep. a standing and fixed organization. And the next organizational change we are uh, planning now is yeah, to definitely leave the traditional project mode uh -huh. and turn uh, the whole thing into uh, dedicated value streams okay. in a standing organization. Yep. Is there a way to calculate the 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 returns, the savings that you make with this this project, or the, the the extra revenues that you generate with this, how do you measure the success of something like this? Yeah, of course, uh, uh, just a modernization doesn't usually uh, yield additional revenues, but mm -hmm. definitely uh, we uh, have a lot of savings on the um, uh, legacy environment, which sums up to something like two million euro a year, mm -hmm. which is about 20, 25 percent compared to the legacy. Yeah. It's not only sheer running cost, but also uh, the cost of changing the system. So we expect to be uh, twice as fast in development of new things mm -hmm. at a lower rate. Yeah. So it's not only time, but also uh, um, um, velocity and uh, efficiency. Yeah. And stability, I can imagine, or definitely, availability. Definitely, and yeah, uh, definitely, yeah. Moving to the cloud is a boost in operational performance. Yeah. But not necessarily, I mean, the cloud is not necessarily cheap, right? So. So is that some? How do you how do you manage that? How do you uh, because I, I, I the more I speak to uh, CIOs about yeah, the cloud yeah, nowadays, yeah, 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 this yeah, topic yeah. comes up more and more. Yeah. No, no, as you say correctly, cloud is not cheaper than on prem. It's mm -hmm. rather more expensive mm -hmm. if you don't really take care. But uh, I would say it's more the um, the uh, uh, 
secondary effects like higher speed. Here yeah, you can release any time. You do not need any resources for deployments. You do not need any downtimes for deployment yeah. windows and so. And you just can yeah, uh, uh, push your CI, CD development pipeline onto production. And uh, um, yeah, having that is much more a factor of speed and efficiency, yeah. less on if you just count IT infrastructure cost. Mm -hmm. And then you're perfectly right. Yeah, cloud isn't a really a cost saver yeah. on that direct cost. Okay. Jochen, a second project that I uh, wanted to uh, discuss with you is your production planning and steering, your PPS program or system. Tell me about that. What's the function? What, what was the challenge? Why are you working on this? Yeah, of course, in an airline environment, everybody is really focused on the best utilization of our assets. And as you can imagine, an asset like that costs quite a lot of money. Yeah. So everybody's really focused uh, um, to make maximum use of the capacity. But in air freight, it's also a lot of about yeah, warehousing. Mm -hmm. yeah, we need to manage freight. Yeah. We have to import it. We have to export it. We have sometimes to store it. Yeah. We need a lot of people to do that work. Yeah. Yeah. Different to passenger, freight doesn't move on its own. Yeah. It must be moved. <laughs> yeah. We have pretty complex processes for customs, for insurance for uh, customer uh, uh, management uh, yep. and, uh, uh, and so And so it's pretty labor intense work. It's also as it heavy beyond the planes. It requires a lot of infrastructure for warehousing and storage and so mm -hmm. And recently uh, the focus went a little bit uh, beyond just making maximum use of the um, plane also uh, best utilization of our warehouse capacities. Okay. Yeah. And uh, basically we need to balance three streams, which is first the freight, the shipments, mm -hmm. you know, which is our core business. Second, our physical premises. And third, the people who do the work. Yeah. Yeah? And you operate at best efficiency if all the streams are uh, best synchronized. Mm -hmm. yeah? And how do you do that? Yeah? Formally with the expertise of the yeah, people and workers, but in a complex environment at that scale, yeah, this comes to a natural end. Yeah, you have had monopolies and uh, if the right people are not on board, yeah, it ends up in a mess. So we decided uh, three, four years ago yeah, to implement a true uh, production planning and steering environment, mm -hmm. which basically yeah, brings all the three perspectives together. What is the expected shipment flow? Mm -hmm. What are our available um, capacities in our warehouses and which people do we need at which time uh, to manage best the physical processes. Yep. And this is basically the uh, intention of the PPS okay. project. And this was implemented with a package. There was not a, a custom development, uh, correct? Yes. yes, indeed. And this is from an IT preparer, a smart solution. Mm -hmm. As I said, we want best anticipate uh, what are the expected flows in the next week. Yeah. And Air freight bookings are very different to passenger bookings. Yeah, we have most bookings within a few days in advance only. Okay. Yeah, different to passenger business. So a good forecast, yeah, gives you also a good estimation on your expected workload in the next days and weeks. So based on our analytics environment, which has nothing to do specifically with a, 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 a certain business function, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a generic environment. Yeah, is used for that forecasting of the shipment flows for the next. 7 to 14 days. That's very, very important to optimize your, your resources, people and so on. If, if you only know two days up front how much work they're going to be, Absolutely. forecasting is super important. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And second, the planning now, the actual planning, yeah, how to bring the shipment flows, the workforce and the facilities best together is based on the newly introduced software from mm -hmm. uh, Quintic, does all systems, mm -hmm. yeah, which we uh, uh, tailored a little bit for our purposes. And third, the actual monitoring in the real-time environment is again based on our existing uh, back-end fulfillment system mm -hmm. uh, from the India-based uh, uh, software company IBS, which is probably the market leader in air freight yep. solutions. Um, and so we bring smart together in a smart way together yeah, the analytical forecasting, the somehow optimizer from Quintic. Mm -hmm for the planning and then the actual steering and monitoring in the um, current process. And l like a typical feedback loop, yeah, what we learn from the monitoring and steering will be now 
uh, also uh, implemented again in the next forecast okay. cycles. And how far are you in the implementation of that? Is that already com That's completed? Yeah. Completed. Okay. We uh, implemented it for our major hub here in Frankfurt last year. Okay. We are now planning to roll it out to further hubs like Munich and maybe Brussels. Okay. Happy, happy clients. Pretty happy. <laughs> yeah. In that sense, I need to admit. Uh, it also uh, re it was not just an IT project. It it's was also both an IT and, and it also changed yeah, a lot in the business process. Course, yeah. It's much more than the booking engine project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, of course, yeah. If you want to change um, uh, the people's way of working by IT, you need to invest <laughs> a lot in uh, yeah. change management. And mm -hmm. This is still going on, but it's pretty well accepted simply due to the yeah, seeable and tangible yeah. <coughs> sorry success we, we we really have with the new way of um, okay. planning our resources. And can you qu quantify the the savings or the the impact of financial or other impact, people impact of uh, this program? I can. Uh, I can't disclose everything here. <laughs> uh, I ask for your understanding. <laughs> it's also a, a sure. seven digit uh, saving mm -hmm. on material cost every year. More important, uh, we need uh, significantly less people mm -hmm. to do that work. It's not meant as a people reduction program. It's mm -hmm. more yeah, how do we deal with a uh, yeah, lack of people here, yeah. lack of workforce in the Rhine Main area for. Uh, in an airport environment especially, yep. and uh, how can we compensate somehow the lack of people with a better uh, yep. IT steering. Okay, let's talk a bit more about technology because, I mean, we, we like to talk about technology, right? So, um, uh, um, new development methodologies, platforms, cloud is, is, is very key, then making use of, of, of an integrated set of, of, of packages is key. What are the other close to your heart new technologies that, that you're fascinated by, that you're working with, that you're testing out, yeah. that, that are top of your uh, priority uh, yeah. uh, these days? Yeah. I would say the most relevant for our industry is uh, um, yeah, beyond uh, uh, having the right application for the right business process. Mm -hmm. yeah, more from an IT perspective is indeed cloud. It is an accelerator for development. Mm -hmm. It is also a booster in quality, yep. yeah, helping a lot uh, of uh, bringing the um, application people yeah, closer to uh, the, the IT infrastructure you need mm -hmm. to run your business. And it's basically the uh, fundamental ingredient for a DevOps uh, yep. IT organization, which we have uh, implemented here. Data, yeah, it's getting more and more important in every industry. Yep. Yeah, And this is also the next big thing ahead of us yeah, okay. to really refresh our current uh, IT landscape for and as I'm managing data, I don't talk about analytics or reporting anymore. It's really what we call business analytics, business data environment, yep. yeah, to bring everything together to a new platform, not just people generating a report and sending it to somebody else's mailbox, yep. but really to empower people in the organization yeah, to work with data, yeah, both technically, mm -hmm. but also uh, uh, with the right methodology, yep. yeah, giving them access to data, also the data literacy they need to work in data. Yep and also to implement new roles like data scientists or data. Uh, so, so that's the one of the big next, next uh, programs that you're going to work on, exactly. putting in data, I mean, data governance, there's so many, many different aspects of exactly, it. Exactly, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Let's talk a bit about your uh, IT organization. Uh, uh, Lufthansa Cargo in total, 4,000 people. What is it, two and a half billion revenue, huge, huge uh, uh, level of revenue. How big is how big is IT in, in, in people and, and, yeah. and budgets and yeah. so on? Yeah, we're currently about 165 people, mm -hmm. indeed growing, yeah? Yeah. simply because of uh, our strategy, what I uh, mentioned earlier, yeah, not just to buy IT and yeah. to manage our partners and uh, uh, providers, but also to have uh, the right competences in our co uh, core uh, um, uh, IT team. Yeah. So architects, security specialists, but also more and more developers. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, we also introduced, uh, or we decided, just decided uh, some uh, month ago, to um, yeah now uh, educate people mm -hmm. leaving school okay. yeah, in a vocational training for IT development, which is completely new to the whole organization. Yeah. So we do not only invest in uh, uh, yeah, experts from universities, but also in really training and educating uh, the people on our own. 
Yeah, you're getting the size and, and, and the scale where that is possible and, yeah. and, where, um, and you're forced to do it because there's not enough people on the, yeah. on the market. Anyway, what's the, what's the IT operating model? How have you organized the, the, your, your team of 165 people? Yeah, we basically uh, um, a product centric, IT product centric organization. Yeah. Yeah, when I started here in 2015, uh, I found more of the classical uh, uh, yeah, plan build organization. Yeah. We had projects, we had the development teams and the, the maintenance and operations yeah. teams. Yeah. And uh, I remember well a situation when uh, um, four or five people showed up at my disk. I need for my project. Yes, and for development, we also need that for operations. And then uh, also the architects and the security specialists came and said, hey, come on. Why should I know better how to prioritize than you? And so we decided uh, um, yeah, to completely transform the matrix mm -hmm. as a mathematician yeah, and uh, really uh, bring all the people working on a certain application together in the team, yep. yeah, whether it's a project, whether it's operations, whether it's development, mm -hmm. to um, define a dedicated product owner, IT product owner yep. per application. So we now have about 40, 45 applications which we yeah, own and manage on our own yep. with a dedicated pro product owners. Mm -hmm. And they have the full responsibility for managing the yep. backlog, whether it's business driven, whether it's IT driven, whether it's driven by the environment, mm -hmm. regulatory environment or legal law, whatever yep. drives uh, some change. So Jochen, uh, you are the CIO here since 2015. So that means quite a number of years already. So what is today fundamentally your role? Where do you spend most of your time as a CIO? Yeah, of course, as a CIO, you always have and will have sort of a housekeeping function. You simply need to make sure that the whole stuff is up and running in a reliable way. Yeah. This is the basics of the role. Yeah. But of course, a CIO should have a much broader vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, um, we, are not, we are not longer understanding ourselves as just the, say, development uh, teams behind the business need, mm -hmm. but much more also yeah, trying to shape the business and to, to improve the business also yep. with own initiatives mm -hmm. or at least uh, strongly yeah, challenging, not in the sense of uh, denying something, but really co-development between business and IT. Yeah. Yeah, really making sure that the business idea and the right technology come together. Mm -hmm. So more of an advisory function and not just as, a, as an implementer. Yeah. Yeah. Second, also beyond IT and digital, we also see ourselves as a strong contributor to the organizational development of the company. Mm -hmm. yeah, as I said, we move from the classical plan build run organization into a IT DevOps organization. Yeah. And we are currently on the way to turn that uh, again, into a business-oriented uh, uh, function. Yep. Uh, you might call it biz DevOps or yep. value streams or however you call it. Mm -hmm. So really bring it together, standing business, IT and provider teams yep. dedicated to certain uh, um, value streams. We currently identify something like four or six value streams. Mm -hmm. Most important for Lufthansa Cargo. Yeah? And this will be the next organizational shift. We also think about yeah, switching from traditional individual goal setting mm -hmm. to an OKR steering of the organization yeah, based on yeah, more agile methods simply to um, reflect our fastly uh, changing yeah. environment, business environment. And as I said previously, yeah, WUKA is reality in our business. <laughs> yeah. So and, uh, we cannot afford any longer yeah, projects running for two or three years. Yeah. And once you're done, the whole environment has completely changed. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the CIO is becoming like a, a chief inspiration officer no? for, for the, the digital future and development and, and of, of, of the business. So, but if you, if you look at your calendar, where do you, where do you spend most of your time nowadays? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's more or less balanced between yeah, uh, managing the IT here mm -hmm. in my own team at Lufthansa Cargo, <coughs> managing also the interfaces uh, with the several group entities. Mm -hmm. We have at Lufthansa Group what we call a federal model with a strong central organization on group level for information security, okay. IT infrastructure and so. And uh, third, of course, uh, and this is getting rather more than less definitely uh, with the business 
teams here within uh, Lufthansa Cargo. Okay. So, so much more really yeah. Yeah, on ice level with handling revenue management and uh, global handling and flight yeah. operations than uh, just say the IT behind all that. Okay. And can you elaborate a little bit on how Cargo works together with the other parts of, of, of Lufthansa? Uh, where, what kind of central services and, or strategies that are there or how independent the different units are? Well, we have an own uh, profit and liability responsibility, mm -hmm. of course, as, uh, as, an, as an airline. Um, we have uh, quite an easy principle in theory. Yeah? Share what you can share. Mm -hmm. Do individually what makes your business better. Okay. Yeah? And uh, uh, of course, that means uh, that, for example, on business side, we share techniques for maintaining our planes, mm -hmm. Lufthansa techniques. We have also shared service organization for corporate functions like HR, finance, procurement, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, whatever we do for um, logistics and our freight operations, yeah. this is definitely yeah. our own business. And this is also a little bit reflected on the IT side. Huh? Yeah. So we are in charge of the handling fulfillment, operations, IT applications, we need de specifically for air freight business. Yeah. On the other hand, yeah, what you need to generally manage a plane, like shoe management, like weight and balance management and that stuff, is shared across the airlines uh, in the whole Lufthansa group. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk a little bit on, on um, your role as a CIO, as a manager. I mean, and, and a manager needs to make sure that he attracts the right people, that he keeps good people, and that he makes them successful. So, so what is your secret ingredient? What's your <laughs> approach in, in creating successful teams? Yeah, given them trust and responsibility, mm -hmm. as I said, uh, we try to, um, you always have sort of a hierarchy, you always need mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine any company without any hierarchy. But as I said, yeah, decision should be taken by the product owner. He is in charge of the application, not the controller and not the CIO and not the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, is the com he or she is the competence and yeah. uh, they should also uh, fill that role. Yeah, we organize uh, teams around the applications. We try to uh, reduce administrative overhead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no matter on what level, you always can do less on that yeah. because it's always considered as a burden. Um, but in a group like ours, you always need some uh, governance and compliance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would say the most uh, uh, attracting um, argument for uh, our people is we have a purpose. We at Lufthansa Cargo definitely have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And IT at Lufthansa Cargo has a purpose on its own, really yeah, bringing technology into our business mm -hmm. yeah, to make better business. Okay. That's management side. Let's talk about leadership. What is the kind of leadership style that you prefer that you also like to see in, in, in your team leaders. Um, how, would, how would you describe, because I mean, managing is, is organizing things, is organizing teams, attracting yeah. the right people. Leading is um, creating a vision so that people yeah. are yeah. able to follow you. Yeah. But how do you do that? How do you make sure that people want to follow you as a, as a CIO here? Yeah, I think really it's, it's, it's key to give them really uh, 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 as you say, a vision, yeah, mm -hmm. just beyond the uh, description of their workplace. Yeah? yeah, where do we want to go? Yeah, we as a company, we as an IT organization within the company, but also, yeah, every individual. Yeah, what is our value contribution with the company? Yeah. Really, yeah, bring it down to each and every body. Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, to make the company uh, work and work better okay. in the future. And uh, um, yeah, we try to. Uh, give as much reliability, as I said, down to the people, mm -hmm. where, yeah, bring to where, the, where the competence sits, yep. yeah, not to boards or, uh, uh, um, or uh, governance bodies, but uh, um, give them the, yeah, the freedom they need mm -hmm. to take the right decisions in a clearly defined framework, mm -hmm. yeah, what should be obeyed and what are the boundaries you okay. cannot uh, uh, pass. If I go to your teams here and, 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 and ask around what they think of you, <laughs> how do you think you are perceived as a leader? What do you think they will say about you when you're not around? Yeah, you should ask them, not me. Of course, <laughs> but, but I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, what do they say? Uh, maybe um, that sometimes I'm 
not a friend of lengthy discussion. Okay. You might call it impatient, but this is something <laughs> probably everybody claims. Yeah. Maybe I'm getting bored um, easily Quickly? when okay. it's about processes and governance mm -hmm. and bureaucracy. This is definitely not my favorite topic. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, more positively, uh, hopefully uh, they will say that I managed to turn the IT organization from a just a fulfillment unit mm -hmm. into a strategic enabler of the whole company. Okay. Yeah, that we really uh, have improved our standing and reputation mm -hmm. with the organization. Yeah, that we definitely have evolved from a cost factor uh, to really a strategic function, mm -hmm. which is also reflected in the org yeah. chart at Lufthansa Cargo. And hope so, hopefully they say that have a, uh, that they uh, have fun uh, getting back to the office also tomorrow. <laughs> You shared with us, Jochen, your, uh, your MBTI, your personality type, um, uh, and it's, it's quite a special one, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> I don't encounter it that much uh, when, when talking to CIOs. So uh, your MBTI profile is you're an ESFP, yeah. also known as an entertainer. So that's not, there's <laughs> not many CIOs, entertainers, and ESFPs are persons who are extroverted, observant, feeling, and have prospecting personality traits, and you love vibrant experiences. You love to engage in life eagerly and take pleasure in discovering the unknown. That's what the profile says. And uh, people with this profile can be very social, uh, often uh, encouraging others into shared activities. Um, ESFPs have a number of strengths. So let's discuss these first <laughs> and see uh, where do you recognize yourself or where, where don't you recognize yourself. So mm -hmm. entertainers can be very bold. They can be very original. Um, they have a focus on aesthetics, on showmanship. They can be very practical, observant, and they have excellent people skills. Does that translate to, um, to your own experience? Yeah, indeed, I need to admit when I uh, did the MBTI and I first saw the result as an entertainer. <laughs> yeah, nobody ever has uh, called me an entertainer <laughs> before, and I guess very few mathematicians really are good entertainers. <laughs> yeah, no, but certainly when I uh, looked into the profile and mm -hmm. the description behind, indeed, I found uh, it echoed a lot with me. Yeah? Okay. Bold, you mentioned bold. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. You mentioned practical, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah? Implementation over strategy over process and yeah. administration. Certainly, yes. Um, uh, People skills? I hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. Again, uh, um, this is something you should ask uh, my peers, mm -hmm. my colleagues, okay. uh, and my teams. Um, and certainly observant, yes, as well. And okay. always looking at uh, what could be the next uh, thing you should do mm -hmm. yeah, to shift the uh, boundaries and limits of possible a little bit further. Yeah? Okay. What is the um, next uh, uh, yeah, action field you should uh, should tackle instead of just relying on what you have okay. achieved? Well, let's look, look at the flip side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's Which always one. <laughs> sometimes more interesting one is uh, potential weaknesses of uh, the entertainers is they can be very sensitive, they can be conflict averse, yeah. They can be easily bored. We already talked about that. Um, sometimes poor long-term planners and sometimes unfocused. Yeah. yeah Which yeah. ones do you recognize? And I mean, you, you can't be unfocused though, as a CIO. <laughs> you can't be very super, super sensitive. So which one do you recognize most and how do you work on them? How do you have you overcome these weaknesses? Yeah, uh, maybe it's indeed when I saw that uh, unfocused, yeah, it really echoed with me a little mm -hmm. bit. I get quite easily distracted, I need to admit, yeah? okay. especially if discussions are, yeah, are endless about the same things without getting to a result. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they pe perceive uh, um, myself as not fully attending and spending my full concentration on okay. the topic. I need to if, admit, if it's boring, yeah, yeah. this is not the best manner I sometimes <laughs> show, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so how do you manage that? If I can, yeah, trying to uh, give a little bit more guidance or directions mm -hmm. with the discussion. Yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, if I feel myself getting distracted or uh, yep. non-focused, yeah. Seeing that as a signal to myself and uh, mm -hmm. uh, calling for action. Okay. Yeah. 
I, recog I recognize this, by the way, so I can <laughs> <laughs> fully empathize yeah. there. Uh, what I do not fully share is not having a long-term vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I do. Mm -hmm. Maybe m sometimes I should make it a little bit more explicit and talk even more about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I tend to uh, ignore that yeah, others do not automatically follow my my view, my perspective, mm -hmm. my vision, yeah, just from talking about once or twice, you yep. must repeat it more often and, and insist more and a little bit more consistently yep. on, on, on that path to make it more yeah, prominent and tangible and visible. This is definitely something I need to work on. Yep. And, and you can't lead an organization of 165 people if you're conflict averse, because conflict yeah. <laughs> will arise anyway <laughs> with, yeah. with, with, with people. So, so how have you developed in that area? And, and have you, have you, is that really, was that a, a, a challenge when you were younger? Yeah, it was, it was mm -hmm. definitely. And uh, um, yeah, now I'm rather say, choose your battles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't just look for a battle to fight for, yeah, but really look, where is it really promising to spend your energy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, uh, but also have your conviction and go for it, fight yep. for it. But uh, um, if you also see that something you can't change, yeah, I think it's maybe due to my age or due to my experience. Yeah, take it, accept it, or leave it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can't change it, yeah, so accept it or leave it. Yeah, and uh, um, don't spend your energy in senseless activities which will make you tired but and without, yeah. <laughs> without any with any uh, yeah, benefit for anybody in your professional life let's talk a little bit more about that and then we come to personal uh, life in your professional life what is it that drives you most when at the end of the week or on an end of the month are you happy and 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 feel yeah. content yeah what what must happen uh, to uh, to give you that feeling yeah, really to see that you have something uh, measurable, tangible achieved over the last days. It mm -hmm. could be a successful deployment. It could be a good recruitment, yep. uh, some, some great uh, new joiners on board or uh, a good discussion or good decision uh, in a, in a group wide committee, whatever. Yeah, something mm -hmm. really, where you can say, hey, these are the three highlights of the week, yeah? okay. uh, which you really can count and uh, okay. tell on. Yeah. On a personal level, uh, so we have a bit of an idea of you as a professional. On a personal level, what, what are your passions there? How do you unstress and what do you do when you get home? A lot of sports. Okay. Yeah. A lot of uh, also endurance sports, yeah, like yeah. running, like cycling, biking, okay. mountaineering, climbing and so. Yeah, a lot of outdoor sports. Yeah, really completely off in a literal sense, uh, off, off the office. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So Jochen, what I wanted to ask you, you I, you've shared with us that you have a son who is 14 years old. And you've just spent wonderful time in the American parks uh, this summer with uh, with your family. Um, what is it that you are passing on to your to your son? What are the core values that you live by and that you pass on to your uh, to your son? Yeah, honesty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, openness. Yeah, I really uh, uh, drive him to make his own view and make his own opinion, mm -hmm. not just reading what others say, yeah. right, uh, chat with him, but really making up his own mind to develop his own convictions, mm -hmm. but also uh, fight for his convictions and go for them. Okay. Do you have a personal mantra, Jochen, and, and, and how would you use that? Yeah, not sure about a mantra, but maybe as a uh, uh, theme for life, yeah. Um, always up the hill. <laughs> always up the hill? What does that mean? <laughs> Yeah, both literally, I love to go to the mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, biking, climbing, oh, yeah. running. Yeah, and uh, once you get up and you're on the top of a mountain, yeah, you have hopefully, with the weather is fine, a great view. Mm -hmm. You already can spot out the next target to achieve. Okay. This is also a little bit in uh, my professional life, the same. Yeah, once you have achieved something, don't lay back, relax, and uh, uh, um, be happy with what you have achieved, but yeah, really always look what should be the next thing to do yeah, to mm -hmm. contribute to the company's success. Yeah. Yeah. What should we do next? Whether it's an IT project, 
whether it's an organizational change, whether it's a personal contribution, whatever you can do uh, for your company. Okay. If you look back into your uh, professional career, were there important mentors, important leaders that you have learned from, people that you look up to? And, and, and could you give an example? Yeah, <laughs> indeed, I try from every boss, I try to learn or keep with me one or two learnings. Could mm -hmm. be good learnings, but also could be not so good learnings. Yeah. yeah. And one thing is very, very simple, but I remember well a former uh, boss of mine um, uh, when he said, uh, um, don't hire for skills, hire for attitudes. Yeah. Now for me, that's, that's clear. In that situation, I was a young team leader first time. I said, no, but I need this and that <laughs> person because he only can do the job. No, he can't. Yeah? He can't. Yeah? And uh, um, also, uh, uh, yeah, what could you take from them uh, as a, maybe as a negative learning? And I remember also a uh, former boss of mine, for example, he told me, yeah, you always should bring somebody else between you and the problem. Mm -hmm. yeah? This is not my understanding. Yeah? If there's a problem, yeah, tackle it. Yeah? Tackle it. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, uh, don't try to um, blame others. Yeah? That was the advice he gave you. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah, bring somebody, yeah, yeah. Else. Bring wow. somebody else between you and the problem. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, this yeah. is not my understanding of responsibility, no. especially not as a manager and as a leader. Yeah, yeah, to find somebody else to blame, but really, yeah, it is expected from you, and this hopefully also is reflected. If you ask my team yeah, about myself, yeah, yeah I don't uh, 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 escape and uh, uh, try to find uh, uh, guilty people, but really tackle the problem, find a solution without yeah. blaming. Let's nobody. talk a little bit more about. Problem because in, in IT, in business in general, certainly in IT, and there's a lot of things that go well, a lot of successes, but there's also quite a number of things that don't go well. So we all have our failures. Uh, and, and so looking back at, at, uh, at your career, could you select maybe one failure that you would say was your most brilliant one in the sense that yeah. you really learned something from it? Yeah. It was definitely not a brilliant one, but it's really <laughs> a striking one. Uh, yeah. And I remember uh, it's maybe 15, 18 years ago, but mm -hmm. it's really, it really made something with, my, with okay. myself. And uh, we had a very, very uh, difficult situation, uh, basically depending on a head monopoly, an external freelancer, mm -hmm. who was basically the component, the single competence for a whole accounting system, a legal accounting system. Uh -huh. And uh, we were basically in his hands. Yeah? Okay. And uh, nobody dared to challenge him, nobody dared also to even uh, question him and uh, ex replace him. Yeah? But on the other hand, our business came back, our sales came back, acquiring one product after the other. Yeah? Much more than every team could have implemented, mm -hmm. but they signed the contract without asking IT and then it, and it was always the same individual on which everything, the whole business um, depended. And uh, I made a couple of proposals. Yeah? Mm -hmm how to change the situation, to stop sales, to migrate to a standard application, yeah. which could have been an option. But in the end, yeah, also my boss said, no, 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 no. Uh, I don't tell the business that bad message and come back with a good message yeah, without any business impact. Mm -hmm. And I learned after a while only yeah, that there are situations where you definitely have an impact. Yeah? So, I didn't fight hard for it. Mm -hmm. In the end, it um, extremely exhausted me. It's exhausted the same team, and uh, my 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 um, my uh, worst experience was that I uh, tried to resolve the situation I myself for almost two years without having any success, mm -hmm. without any vision how to deal with that. In the end, it was really getting critical also for my personal. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, health and then I finally decided but far too late really that yeah, somebody else needs to take over and, and what, I really what, what was your learning that that you can't always win and you better quit early and not fail quick enough or what was your yeah learning? also that uh, but the most important learning really yeah fight harder for your conviction okay yeah, fight harder and don't uh, uh, um, yeah, try to be everybody's darling and friend okay. yeah? especially in situation as you said a problem yeah where there is no Silver bullet, which uh, solves the problem yeah. without any without any impact, without okay. any side effects. Yeah. Let's talk a bit about personal life. Well, if you reflect on your personal life, what would you say uh, was 
And I know, of course, your son and your wife is very important and yeah. they're the best thing that ever happened to you. But outside of, 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 of family, because of course that's very important, what would you say is the best thing that has ever happened to you? I'm not sure whether that's a single thing mm -hmm. uh, which I can mention here. Actually, yeah, I grew up in a very, very uh, um, safe environment. Mm -hmm. I'm living in one of the best regions in the world so far here in the middle of Europe. Yeah. Yeah. I always had some luck with my jobs, with my friends, my family. Yeah. Yeah, so nothing really bad happened so far to me. Also, yeah. I'm still pretty healthy and still fit to go into the mountains, to go okay, on super. my bike. So, <laughs> yeah. so many, many good things uh, happened, happened in your life. So you're lucky, uh, lucky person. But we sometimes we also have bad things that happen to us. Can you give an example of, of something that has happened to you and that you learned from um, maybe a bad experience? Yeah, also here I need to, maybe it sounds a little bit boring, <laughs> but uh, there's also n no such single event I could mention here. Uh, definitely what I just had on the, on the business side with that project some yep. 15 years ago. This was really, uh, um, yeah, really a, a very bad experience, but also it brought with it a lot of learnings for okay. me and I'm pretty sure uh, uh, yeah, it helped me much in yep. future situations to deal differently with, uh, yep. with that. Yeah. So Jochen, in, in life, what is it that you love most and what is it that you fear most? Yeah, what I fear most at the moment is that we as humans mm -hmm. uh, consciously destroy the environment we are living in, mm -hmm. not only the climate change but also yeah, whether it's the political turbulence mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, the, the pressure against the democracies yep. and the whole uh, way we deal with our uh, uh, our planet is yep. the only one where we can live on. Yep. Yeah, political stability, uh, uh, climate, sustainability are very, very important uh, topics. Huh? What I hope most at the same time that maybe maybe tech can help us a little bit on that. Yeah. Whether it's data for transparency, mm -hmm. yeah, we know that the downside of Facebook are yeah, the influence on, on yeah. elections and so, but also we know that the, the dark net is also a, a means also for uh, uh, journalists uh, um, yeah. across the world to uh, also in, uh, um, in uh, authoritarian regimes to yeah. uh, somehow uh, keep contact with the uh, democratic yeah. world and so. Also maybe with the help of technology, we finally can at least uh, limit the impact of the climate yeah. change and uh, um, uh, and of course um, people don't love to change the way of living mm -hmm. yeah? and maybe technology can help us a little bit to yeah. Yeah, keep the way of living as we do right now with much less impact on yeah. our planet. And, and, and I mean an airline and, 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 and cargo logistics company sustainability is I can imagine I on the agenda. Absolutely. So, so uh, Absolutely. digital or the role of IT and digital in sustainability is that is that a focus of the company as well? Yeah, we we need to be honest here. Of course, uh, ninety nine percent or so of our uh, CO two emissions are based on yeah burning place, kerosene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, the footprint of IT. Of course, there is some footprint. It's pretty low compared to yeah. um, burning kerosene. What we definitely do, of course, with the means of IT is not so much thinking about green data center or mm -hmm. uh, renewable energy to run our uh, servers, but it's more or it's uh, additionally uh, how we can use IT to make best utilization of our capacity. Yeah. Uh, uh, the senseless burn of kerosene for empty uh, uh, um, belly positions yes. is definitely a senseless waste of. Yeah, so, so the be better your booking system is, the planning system is, the more Absolutely. optimal the, the planes are uh, used, the, uh, the better, of course. And on corporate level, of course, and uh, I need really to mention, we see ourselves as a forerunner in the industry also to um, use sustainable fuel, but also from truly e-fuels yeah, produced by electronic, uh, electric energy and uh, basically the air around uh, to absorb CO2, yep. convert it into uh, kerosene, and uh, fill our tanks with that. Well, we don't see electric uh, air freight coming uh, quite quite quickly. Hardly, I, hardly, I, hardly. And that will be <laughs> that would be interesting, right? Yeah. So we're coming to the last question of this uh, this interview, Jochen. Thank you so much for your time and for your hospitality here. Um, and that is, people that are watching these interviews are some of them are young, ambitious professionals that want to follow in your footsteps. 
What are, what's the advice that you would give to them so that they can be successful as, uh, as you are? No, be bold, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Be clear about what you want to achieve. I'm not talking about your next career step in three or five years, but uh, uh, really have your own clear plan what to achieve and uh, uh, follow it. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, I would say if you look into our IT industry with a strong tech background, and a good business focus. Yeah, you're perfectly equipped for your career. Yeah, mm -hmm. you are not depending on this, this or that certain industry. Yeah, technology is definitely something which is changing rapidly, so it never gets bored. Yeah, yeah, you're somehow independent of the industry. I myself changed the industry uh, three times, and I succeeded with all the changes. And uh, um, yeah, it also broadens your uh, horizon uh, from change from every change to the next change. Yeah. Yeah, the most important advice, trust in yourself. Okay. And on that note, Jochen, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having this conversation with you. I'm going to fly back now to one of the Lufthansa <laughs> flights to, uh, to Belgium, but uh, it was really, really interesting. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Henrik. It was a pleasure to me and happy landing. Thank you. In Belgium. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>